Hello, Leos, and welcome to your April 2024 horoscope. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, Vera, welcome back. And thank you for joining me today. So here today, I'm going to discuss the main events happening in April, and I'll tell you how they will influence your zodiac sign on a deeper level. I follow Western astrology and tropical zodiac, so welcome. Now, here in April, we've got three major events, and this is Mercury retrograde in Aries. Then it's we've got a solar eclipse in Aries and Jupiter and Uranus conjunction in Taurus. So these are the most important events of the month. And I think that's already quite a lot to make the month very busy, very active. So we start with Mercury retrograde in Aries in your ninth house. So here, Mercury will be retrograde from the 1st until the 25th. It starts at 27 degrees. It ends at 15 degrees. The pre-shadow period starts on the 19th at 15 degrees. And the post-shadow period ends on the 13th of May at 27 degrees. So basically what we are dealing with, it's uh, the second and the third decan of Aries from the 15th until the 27th degree of Aries. These are the most important uh, degrees. So have a look if you have any placements uh, in Aries or in the other cardinal signs. Of course, conjunctions will be easier to deal with. Squares can offer a little bit of um, tension. So that would be any placement in Cancer or in uh, Capricorn, and oppositions are about other people. Compromise here might be uh, the key or a mutual um, or meeting halfway. Right, so here Mercury retrograde will be in your ninth house. The ninth house deals with foreign places, foreign travel, freedom, independence, and adventure, or that the need to engage in activities that offer an opportunity for expanding your wisdom, horizons, knowledge, and so on. Now, at the same time, you might be also renewing your passport. You might be visiting uh, places that you have already been to in the past. Perhaps this is when you will be reapplying for a visa or whatever it is. Overall, Mercury retrograde is great for redoing, reapplying, reassessing. You could be reassessing your life path, your life, life direction, you might be questioning yourself, whether you are on the right track or whether something needs to change. If you feel like you're not in alignment with uh, where you're supposed to be heading, then this Mercury retrograde can help you to get back on track. Now here, this is also when you could be questioning your life philosophy or you could be redefining your life principles. Now, any major changes, adjustments, try to delay them until the 25th of April or after, because when Mercury stations direct, this is when you will regain the clarity that you may lack during the retrograde phase. It's a fantastic time for making decisions, implementing the changes that you wanted to implement throughout the retrograde phase. Now, if you're going to be traveling during the retrograde phase of uh, Mercury between the 1st and the 25th, make sure that you... Um, check if there are any cancellations or delays because here Mercury will also affect um, transportation and for you this is your ninth house connected to foreign tri trips foreign travel okay back up all your data as well of course here on the 8th we've got a solar eclipse in Aries so I think this will be an amazing eclipse but it's happening during Mercury retrograde so what do we do Solar eclipses are about new beginnings, but there's Mercury retrograde. Very often during uh, eclipses, things just happen and overall uh, opportunities come to us. So what it is, um, generally this could be about, uh, first of all, it's happening in your ninth house. So here again, this is that influence connected to your belief system, higher education, a career, perhaps a new career connected to teaching, guiding, coaching, mentoring or perhaps anything to do with law um, legislations, this sort of dynamics are also very much highlighted. Aviation, um, travel agent, uh, perhaps this is where the one of the careers that you are entering at this point. And that's okay, that's fantastic. But uh, since Mercury is retrograde, retrograde, if you can delay signing of any important contracts or agreements if you have to you have to but check the small print make sure you're happy and satisfied and that you fully understand what you are signing what you're committing to at the same time this could be about returning to some opportunities 
that uh, perhaps um, came up in the past, but you didn't uh, have time to to approach them, to fulfill them, to to take advantage of them. So this could be connected to you returning to a goal, idea, project from the past, something that you didn't finish, something that you didn't have a chance to um, begin, for example. So there is something or an element of the past, but at the same time here, I think there could be this stimulation to perhaps uh, to travel, to learn a new language, to engage in activities, studies, courses that could help you to move forward with your life, that could help you to reach fulfillment and success. Now, this eclipse will conjunct uh, Chiron. Chiron is connected to our wounds. Chiron can also bring to the surface any insecurities you may have or any unhealed emotions connected to your uh, ability to feel confident about uh, your, yourself, about your intellect, about uh, perhaps that ability to express your worldviews freely. And if you are, um, well, if there are any um, limitations or if there are any negative energies or any unhealed emotions from the past that generally block your ability to move forward, then this eclipse is also helping to close this major 19 years cycle. 19 years ago, we had a similar series of eclipses on Aries and Libra when the South Node was in Libra and the North Node was in Aries. So I think in many ways, this um, eclipse is connected to you or generally to us closing the, this major 19-year cycle, Chiron is here to help us heal. Many people across the globe will be um, generally, and I can already see it in, in many people, lots of memories uh, uh, or insecurities or fears might be coming up um, from the past as we approach this eclipse season. But here with Chiron, there is this amazing opportunity for healing, for releasing and putting them to rest. Now, this eclipse can bring about a sense of renewal, a sense of rebirth. Perhaps you are entering a new career. Perhaps you are relocating to a foreign country, starting a new course of study, starting a new career. I think I already mentioned that. Or you're learning a new language. Or perhaps you are generally freeing yourself from the heavy baggage, emotional baggage that perhaps blocked that ability to be your true self, to be your authentic self. And perhaps here you're, this is like a journey towards empowerment in many ways. Aries is connected to confidence, assertion. And um, I think something to be mindful of is a tendency towards impulsivity or recklessness. But overall, this is an amazing eclipse for a transformation, a positive transformation in your life, personal growth as well. Now, moving forward, uh, we've got a Jupiter and, and Uranus conjunction at 21 degrees of Taurus on the 20th of April. A very famous um, conjunction that starts a brand new cycle between these two planets. Here, this is happening in your 10th house. So I think as we approach this um, conjunction, you would have already worked on some goals and perhaps you would have already addressed some insecurities that you may have connected to your ability to move forward, to, to move forward or to reach your purpose and to reach your uh, professional life fulfillment in some way. It will especially, especially influence your life if you have any placements in Taurus around 21 degrees. Now, here Taurus is known for its um, stable and practical energy, while Jupiter represents expansion, growth, good fortune, and Uranus is connected to the unexpected, the unforeseen, sudden events, um, but also technology, media. So perhaps you're starting or launching or thinking about launching a new business, an online business. Perhaps this is a new career opportunity. Perhaps this is a new position at your existing um, organization. This could be also connected to recognition or success in your current and existing role. But I think this could be very much connected to many people, to perhaps working remotely, working online, working on your own terms, 
perhaps uh, your organization is changing um, the softwares and uh, there is this massive shift going on with uh, technology and perhaps you're implementing AI. So I think there is this massive, massive change of dynamics. Perhaps this is also connected to your business. Restruct you could be restructuring your business or launching something brand new. So overall, this conjunction can bring some significant changes, opportunities to your in your career life, in your professional life as well. So here, proceed with caution. And... Uh, generally take a step-by-step -step approach because Mercury is still retrograde at this point, even though this is an exciting conjunction, but uh, things will be generally happening so happening very quickly because we've got the eclipses, which accelerate the timeline. And here Uranus brings generally makes things just okay very, very quickly and suddenly. So here you have to be prepared for unexpected situations, changes that may come up and show up around this time. Take advantage of these opportunities, but at the same time, be conscious of the choices that you make around this time. Now on the 23rd, we've got a full moon in uh, Scorpio at four degrees happening in your fourth house. Now this full moon is connected to the solar eclipse we had back in October, 2022. See whether you can remember what happened in your life, in your home area around that time, because this full moon could bring a situation or perhaps um, a person back from that period in time here, back into your life. So what it is, is that uh, here a full moon could be about a completion a peak of a certain or a specific situation or a situation generally re reaching its peak. So something is brewing at your home. Now, Scorpio is connected to deep and transformative energy. One of the places that Scorpio uh, rules uh, in our home, these are places um, that are not very pleasant. So maybe the toilets uh, or pl places under the sink, sewage, for example, the area, um, well, the garbage, the rubbish uh, area, your gutters um, outside. Here during a full moon in Scorpio in your fourth house, it might be that you will be um, undergoing a massive clear out uh, in your, at your home. This is also when, for example, you will be clearing your gutters outside or perhaps this could be also connected to anything to do with clogged uh, toilets or blocked uh, drains. So you could be also dealing with this sort of issues at your home. It doesn't have to be the case, but if this kind of issue comes up, then you can blame the full moon in Scorpio energy. Now, at the same time, this is also uh, very often when we need to deal with pest um, control, uh, with pest control as well. So perhaps if there is too much um, dump at your home, it might be that um, some insects might appear. Now, pay attention to any bugs that might appear as well, like silverfish. These are all connected to Scorpio energy. So perhaps for some, it could play out um, in a way that they might need to um, do pest control at their home. Now, on a different level, this could be also when you have to address a certain situation at, at your home that will need a resolution that will need to uh, be resolved. Perhaps your parents will need your support, your help. Now, this could be also about uh, a contract uh, that uh, is about to expire or your mortgage. So this sort of dynamics would be taking place. There is a lot of heightened um, energy here, emotions, and, and it feels like you will be dealing with something that requires your attention at your your home, domestic life, family dynamics. But we also have a square to Pluto in Aquarius in your seventh house. That's why I mentioned the contract, because perhaps this is when you'll be dealing with um, your contract, your home contract at this time. But the square represents tension. So this signifies that you will likely deal with something uh, deep, of a deep nature. But uh, perhaps this is also connected to you having to face uh, some insecurities, some fears, some obligations, responsibilities that perhaps you've been avoiding. And now during this full moon, this is a time when you have to face them and resolve them, release them in some way. Now on a different level, you might also feel like uh, the time has come to release some old patterns, some old habits that no longer serve. So lots of um, energy connected to growth, transformation. We will explore it further, closer to the date. Now here on the 25th, we've got Mercury stationing direct in Aries. And this is happening at 16 degrees. So overall with Mercury stationing direct in your ninth house, you will regain more clarity, 
when it comes to the direction you want to take or should take moving forward. Mercury retrograde could have brought misunderstandings, delays, setbacks when it comes to travel, foreign travel, especially when it comes to even your learning capabilities, when it comes to that ability to connect with others um, smoothly. And um, self-expression could have also been affected with Mercury regaining its strength. It's like a forward momentum. And I think that you will have so much more clarity and that than you had at the beginning of April. And perhaps you'll be making some important decisions connected to um, your personal growth, connected to your life principles, connected to your education or your career, uh, for example. All right, so here we go, Leos. Thank you very much. I wish you a pleasant month. And until the next time, bye for now.